Attachments and mapping modes are fundamental to effective parametric design. Done well, things seem to just work when you make changes. Ignore them and every change requires a dozen little adjustments throughout. But attachment and the associated mapping modes can sometimes be a little confusing. I've had several requests to explain some of these using a simplified model, so here we go. Every object in FreeCAD starts its life with its own coordinate system. X, Y, and Z are relative to that object. Attachment and mapping change the relation between different objects' local coordinate systems. Primarily, attachment and mapping takes place in terms of an object's origin, X and Y axis, and the XY plane the object lives on. Attachment and mapping can happen in several ways. When you click a face and select New Sketch, you have just attached that sketch to the face. It is also possible to do the attachment and mapping after the fact by going to an object's data pane and calling up the attachment and mapping dialog from there. Sometimes that can be very useful either to change your design or if you have a parametric shape that you're going to need in several places, you can draw the sketch once as a master and then just make clones and attach them wherever needed. This may sound quite abstract, but I believe a few concrete examples will make things clear. Now that I've told you about all of the wonderful things attachments can do for you, I do have a small caution. Because of an issue known as the topological naming problem, there are some revisions you might go back and make to your model that can completely derange every attachment. The crux of the problem is that attachments are made to numbered elements of an object. If you change the shape of that object, all of the elements get renumbered. So the thing you attach to the top of your shape may end up attached to the side once the base shape is changed. Of course, if that happens, there is always the option of simply redoing the attachments to the correct places. If your model's not very large, that may be the best approach. In some cases, you can avoid the problem entirely. For example, if you're stacking a number of features, stack them on top of the global origin such that they'll always be in the right position by default. At most, you'll need to adjust their Z offsets to put them on top of each other. You can even set formulas for the Z offset based on the height of the feature underneath. As you'll see a little later in this series, though, when you're dealing with curves, attachments are really the only way to go. The good news is that developers are working very hard on cracking the topological naming problem with the results expected in the next major release of FreeCAD. If there's interest, I will also do a follow-up video explaining this problem more in depth and detailing the workarounds. But enough of that, let's have a look. I went ahead and set a few things up in advance just to make the demonstration go quicker. We have a sketch with a somewhat sloppily drawn X and Y so you can see how it's oriented. The circle has its center fixed to the origin of the sketch. We have a primitive cube with a primitive cylinder in one corner to mark the origin. This is also the global origin for FreeCAD. When an object is created, the default position is such that its origin is at the global origin. This is why the just created sketch is also there currently. I have three primitive cones with the blue one elevated along the z-axis that I'll use as attachment points for the purposes of later demonstration. I'll select the sketch and in the data pane map mode, I'll click the three dots to bring up the mapping dialog. As you can see, it's ready for me to select something for the primary reference. The first reference is also the support or the primary attachment. In this case, a plain face. This is the most common attachment mode and the one that's used when you select a face and click New Sketch. You'll note that the sketch is standing on top of the cube because we selected the top face as the attachment point, and because the mode is flat face, the origin of the sketch corresponds with the origin of the cube. As you can see, we have another mode available, Inertia 2-3. Essentially, this means to move the origin of the attached object to the center of area of the thing it's attached to, in this case the top face of the cube. As you can see, the origin is now in the center of the cube face rather than at the origin. 
Now I'll change the primary attachment to the tip of the yellow cone. The origin point is moved as we might expect, and our mapping mode is now translate origin. This means just what it says on the tin. The origin of the sketch is translated to match the attachment point. We have the option of selecting additional reference points. I'm going to take that option now and add the tip of the purple cone. Now you'll notice we're attached with the mode inertia 2-3, and we have moved so that the sketch origin is in the center of the area defined by the two cones vertices. Our primary attachment is the yellow cone, and our secondary attachment is the purple cone. This may or may not be the orientation we were hoping for, but we do have additional mapping modes available. I've selected Object Normal X, which simply moves it over to the primary attachment point and makes the x-axis of the sketch normal to the purple cone. We also have Object Normal Y, but it doesn't actually make any difference because the y-axis already happens to be normal to the purple cone. We can select Mode Object XY. In this case, the center of the sketch is attached to the tip of the yellow cone as we would expect. The plane the sketch rests on also includes the tip of the purple cone, and the sketch is oriented such that its x-axis passes through the tip. As is often the case, there is more than one mode that will give the same results. But note what happens when we switch to Object Normal Y. Now the y-axis of the sketch passes through the tip of the purple cone. We get the same with object y-x because we've only selected two reference points. Let's see what happens when we add a third. The tip of the blue cone is elevated in the z-direction. Now we select object y-x with three references. We're still attached to the yellow cone, and the y-axis runs through the tip of the purple cone, which is our second reference. But now the plane of the sketch is tilted such that it also incorporates the tip of the blue cone. It's a little bit hard to visualize, so I'll try to give you a few points of view. The plane the sketch is on gets inclined to make all three reference points coplanar. It rotates the plane along the y-axis because the attachment mode specifies that the y-axis needs to remain with the second reference point. If we switch to object XY, as you might expect, everything rotates around again so that the x-axis goes through the second reference. And you thought you'd never use anything from your high school geometry class. Other options include plane by three points or inertia two three. Referring back to that high school geometry again, any three points define a plane, so plane three points just sets the attached object's plane to the plane defined by the three references. As you can also see by now, not all of the potential modes you can select are necessarily useful. Sometimes it's even a little hard to intuitively guess exactly what a particular mode will do for you. I find that often the best approach is to add the obvious reference points and then try the various available modes until I find one that best matches what I was hoping for. From there I can perform translation and rotation of the attachment in order to get exactly what I wanted. Now that we have an attachment, the data pane now shows an additional attachment section. The placement parameters remain visible but are now read-only. If we want to do any kind of rotation or translation of the sketch, it should now be done in the attachment section and will be relative to the current attachment. It can be important to remember that there may not be a particular combination of references that will give you exactly the orientation you were hoping for, but they will align everything so that a simple translation or rotation with convenient numbers will do the job. The big advantage to using attachments when possible rather than just transforming your object into position is that once the attachments are set, the same relationship between objects will be maintained even when you move things around. For example, let's move our purple cone. Notice that the sketch is rotated around to maintain the relationship between the cones as specified by the attachment in the mode. That's probably quite enough for now.
In my next video in this series, I'll present attachments and modes appropriate for working with curves and lines. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.